Good morning, Room 5 Biologists. Today for Science and Writers Workshop, I have a story, a true story, about what animal? An octopus. Here's an illustration of the octopus. Here's what the octopus looks like in real life. And his name is Inky. And this picture was taken of him at the aquarium in New Zealand. But this story is about how a very smart octopus found his way home. And the author is Cy Montgomery, and it's illustrated by Amy Schimler Safford. Inky's Amazing Escape. Okay, let's make sure you can see. See the baby octopus? The baby octopus hatched out of an egg the size of a grain of rice. His mother used her jet to blow him from her den out to the sea, along with his tiny octopus brothers and sisters. So now that I read the words, I see I was wrong. This is his mom, and she's pushing all the baby octopuses out to sea. Here's a couple more over here. Each octopus set out on a journey alone. They're born ready to explore. For weeks, the octopus rode the currents of the Pacific Ocean. He ate tiny scraps of food that floated by. He grew fast. Soon he needed bigger meals. Clams, fish, and octopuses' favorite, crabs. To find them, the little octopus had to explore. Curious, he wondered, might there be a tasty morsel here? What about over there? He poked his slippery, bendy arms into every nook and cranny. Soon he found a yummy clam. He used his strong suckers to pull the clam apart and ate the clam for dinner. Now the octopus was sleepy. How would he find a safe place to nap? He searched along the coral. He found a crack that led to a little cave. In went one arm, two arms, four arms, eight. Good night. So before I turn the page, I want to ask you, why do octopi live in the sea? Why do octopuses live in the ocean? Why can't they live in a forest? Why can't they live at the top of a mountain? Yeah, they have to live in salt water so that they can breathe. And this is where they can find food. Their body with tentacles was made to be in water. It wouldn't survive in another habitat. In the morning, the octopus again went exploring. What would he find today? He could both feel and taste with his suckers. But he didn't see the long green fish swimming like a banner rippling in the wind. It was a moray eel. He chomped down on two of the octopus's arms. The young octopus used his jet to shoot away, head first, arms trailing behind. But the eel had bitten off the tips of two arms. The octopus was hungry and hurt, but he went on. The octopus spotted a wooden box lying on the sea floor. In went his slippery, bendy arms. In went his squishy head. He ate the lobster and took a nap. Woken from sleep, the octopus felt himself rising up and out of the water. What the octopus thought was a safe den turned out to be a fisherman's lobster trap. You aren't a lobster, the fisherman exclaimed. Who do we have here? The octopus, who had never seen a human before, wondered the same thing. You're hurt, the lobsterman observed. Right? His two arms were bitten off. He 
he decided to take the little octopus to the aquarium. Look at his chalk. He's got all lobsters, and then in the middle he has Inky. The aquarium keeper saw the octopus's hurt arms. You'll be safe with us, she told the octopus, and poured him into a tank. She named him Inky because when they're scared, octopuses can squirt ink. But the little octopus wasn't scared. He was ready to explore. He felt and tasted the glass and all the corners with his slippery, bendy arms and his strong suckers. He crawled to the top of the tank and looked up at the keeper. She handed him his favorite snack, a yummy crab. Now they were friends. Inky liked it when the keeper petted him. Sometimes he was so happy he would change color. Octopuses change color to fool prey and escape enemies, but they show their feelings this way too. When the keeper opened the lid to his tank, Inky turned red with excitement. And when he relaxed, he turned white. Sometimes he made spots on his arms. Sometimes he sprouted splots and stripes. That's amazing how they can change what their body looks like. Inky felt better. He had fun in his tank. The keeper gave him dried corals, pots, and jars to explore. Inky poked his slippery, bendy arms into all of them. Sometimes he'd squeeze his squishy head inside. Sometimes the keeper gave Inky toys. Inky liked to take apart Lego blocks and put them back together. He liked playing with Mr. Potato Head. One time with his suckers, he pulled off Mr. Potato Head's eyes and handed them to the starfish in his tank. Look at the starfish. That is so funny. Inky grew very fast. When he arrived at the aquarium, he was the size of a baseball. Now he was the size of a soccer ball. His arms had healed. Inky was always exploring. One night the keeper forgot to close the lid to Inky's tank tightly enough. He poked a slippery bendy arm through the gap. What would he find? Octopuses are very curious. First one arm, then another, and another. Then all eight arms climbed out of the tank. Finally, his squishy head was out too. Inky slid along the floor, exploring with his arms. Soon he came to a hole, a drain for the water always slopping out of aquarium tanks and hoses. Where would the hole lead? There was only one way to find out. Remember, this is a true story. He poked his slippery, bendy arms into the drain. One arm, two arms, four arms, eight. He pulled and pushed, he pushed and pulled, and finally his squishy head popped inside the drain too. Where do you think he'll go? There he is, traveling through the pipes. I can't believe this is a true story. Inky traveled a long way down. Down, 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 Inky inched his way through the long pipe. At last, he could feel and taste a change because he poked his arm out with the suckers. Out popped one arm, two arms, four arms, eight, and finally, Inky's squishy head was free again. The drain pipe ran right back into the Pacific Ocean. The aquarium was very close to the ocean, like the one in Monterey. And that's where Inky is today, still ready to explore.
amazing. I can't believe those animals could be that smart. So what I want you to write about today is I haven't heard about what your favorite animals are. It's going to be your opinion. I love a lot of sea creatures. I find them to be very, very interesting, like fascinating. Um, so maybe an op no, octopus isn't my favorite, but I like them a lot. They're very interesting. So I want you to tell me what is your favorite animal and why do you think that? So today you have to do at least two reasons because if it's your favorite animal, you probably know a lot about it. So give me two reasons or three reasons. So your first sentence will probably say something like, my favorite animal is. And then you'll tell me a few reasons why you like it so much. Okay, can't wait to find out which one are your favorite.